Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son on Booking the Territory podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of our Smoky Mountain Wrestling Podcast. This is Smoky Mountain Wrestling, episode 158 from February the 4th, 1995. And this is Booking the Territory, the unprofessional wrestling podcast with myself. And this week, Doc Turner, no hard body hopper. He's got wildcat business he is tending to. Doc, what's up, man? You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, I'm going to tell you something up front. I'm going to miss Harper here. But um, this is going to be, I'm going to give away a little bit of a spoiler spoiler alert ahead of time. This is the second highest rated episode we have in, in the 158 so far for me. This is packed. I don't know that I've ever taken this many notes. I think, you know, you're always complaining about me with my shenanigans. I think there's nothing left that we need to do but head to the ring because this shit's off and popping this week. All right. So um, we'll see what the rating looks like towards the end. But real quick, we take a break from Sevierville, Tennessee. What I mean by that is uh, we had been there for the last couple of tapings. Well, we take a break. Um, there's no formal opening to this show. Uh, and I need to hit the Patreon video. Uh, we take a break from Sevierville, Tennessee on this episode, 158 from February the 4th of 95. And we were in Sevierville, but we go straight to Super Saturday Night Fever. Uh, we're at the Knoxville, we're at what appears to be the Knoxville uh, Civic Coliseum for Super Saturday Night Fever. And uh, this was, I believe, taped or took place January 28th of 95. They go straight to the ring, Doc. It is Smothers versus Buddy Landell. Um it's it's the matches joined in progress. I don't know how many minutes they were into this thing, but they show the open. Buddy cheats to defeat Tracy Smothers. This led Budro then later on getting a match with the Dirty White Boy later that night in a lights out match. So if you remember, if you remember, the stipulation was basically the winner of this match uh, w- would essentially get a get a get a match against Dirty White Boy later. So anyway, Doc, your uh, your thoughts. Man, okay, so the one thing I really liked out of this and my big note was, other than not having any music open this up, is right here, buddy, watch him, watch him, putting his hands up and wrapping that chain. How great is that? Just you showing know, the pe- showing the people what he's doing. It's so obvious. Why can't they see it? Why can't they see it? Um, He did that textbook, because that's what you're taught whenever you pull, it, pull a gimmick out. You got to, you got to, make it demonstrative where everybody in the building can see it besides the referee. (laughs) He's got his back turned. So Budro puts the gimmick on his hand, the chain, and he knocks out Tracy Smothers and gets the victory. Any other thoughts on that though, doc? No, good way to start the good way to start the show. Absolutely. And then less, jumps in and again we're we're not in the we're not at the the high school still we're we're you know less is i don't know where he's recording this from uh tommy noe if you're there tell us where less is recording this well from. he's about anyway. to be here he's trying to do a gordon Soley and failing miserably jesus i have no clue what you're talking about but he's okay. on commentary here in this rumble so you're burying tommy noe that's right you're an asshole. he and i he and i have an up and down relationship you know, some okay. weeks I like him and some weeks uh, I don't know. And good, it's good. At least Tommy knows you're playing heel as you try to jerk yourself off and get yourself over as usual. We are in Morristown, Tennessee. New Jack, Mustafa, and Tracy Smothers are the last three people in this um, in this this Morristown Rumble, which is the Smoky Mountain Rumble um, Rumble match. Uh, Smothers won the Rumble, but is jumped after the match by the Gangsters. Scott Armstrong eventually saves Smothers, but then D'Lo joins in and kicks Armstrong's ass. They leave Smothers and Scott Armstrong laying, and then we cut to the gangsters promo. Um, this is choppy, not in a bad way. What I'm saying is it's real quick how they go from, you know, Smothers one to to Smothers getting jumped and and, and Armstrong coming out. It's you know, they're they're cutting various segments together. So do you have any thoughts, Doc? We don't really see the whole thing. No, but the man, what a shithole that looks like. 
Well, and, you know what you know what doesn't help is they're shooting it probably with just one of those handheld camcorders. Yeah, and, it's got a brown tint like it's 1978 in there. I what bet you, you that's 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 Tommy Noe's camcorder. I bet it Matter is. Matter of fact, a, I'm 100 sure that's his camcorder shooting this shit. So let me ask you this: What are the odds, or how close was uh, was it to having the actual KKK hit the ring to help? Tracy before Armstrong got out there. Well, if they're in Morristown, eh, mm. I don't know. A one of the smaller towns, most definitely. Mm. Okay, but because it's Morristown, I don't know. But your your point about the lighting. Remember, they're only using the lighting in the building. They don't have the lighting rig for the normal TV tapings here, and this is being shot with a camcorder, so obviously it's not going to be as good. So, you know. Uh, but I hear you. It, it it definitely looks like it's you know low budget shot, which it is. It's 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 probably Tommy Noe's camcorder shooting this thing. So all right, any other thoughts, Doc? Before we go to the gangsters cutting a promo. Mm -mm. All right, so let's go to the gangsters now. Uh, after they jump Smothers, New Jack. Not only do you have the heavenly bodies breathing down your neck, but it appears now that the new Southern boys. Tracy Smothers and Scott Armstrong are hot on your trail, too. Do I look scared? Scott Armstrong, leg snapped. Steve Armstrong, leg snapped. Jim Cornette, leg snapped two times. And even now, if you put your old daddy, Bob Bullethead Armstrong, in there, snap. I don't care who you put in the ring with us, because we're on a mission. The redneck Armstrong, Tracy's mother, you want to be the illegitimate reject son, and you want to fill in. Well, you come on. You bring your rebel flag. You remember what the North did to the South the last time. Well, son, we'll do it again. You bring your flag, we'll bring ours. We'll show you which egg is more powerful. We'll show you why the gangsters are as bad as they are. I don't care who Jim Cornette go and get? I don't care if Bob Armstrong go down to Georgia and pull up another redneck, you bring him on. I'm going to show you, son, that the gang is in for one thing. We trying to put Smoky Mountains, we trying to put the Armstrong and Cornette, you going down. <laughs> well, this certainly won't be settled soon. Fans, we'll be right back. That was pretty mild uh, from New Jack. Wouldn't you agree? I don't know. I thought it was real good because, first of all, he's out there. It looked like he was wearing... Uh, Miami Hurricane colors, which was a heel move in that day for some folks, right? Yeah, I think people would need to remember the, the 80s hurricanes to understand what you mean, but yes. um, He's telling you everybody whose leg they snapped. That's good stuff. Um, remember what the North did to the South would really get people hot down there. <laughs> I mean, you could use that today. I mean... I ain't trying to say nothing. That that's good, good heel stuff. Yeah, you bring your flag, we'll bring ours. Jesus I thought this Christ. was, I thought this was good. When I say mild, I mean he wasn't. Well, they about weren't out OJ there murdering watermelon and, and right and chicken wings and that type of stuff. Bro, that I, was that rough. I, yeah, when I say mild, that's what I meant. Uh. But, no, good promo from New Jack right there. We go from there to a replay of Boo Bradley last week after he attacked Candido during Candido's promo. And then we go to a uh, a promo from Candido. Hold on, Doc. i gotta, I got to get back to it and cue it up from the beginning. Uh, here it is. Hey, Chris Candido. And, Chris, it seems that Boo Bradley is a bit upset about the dog food dinner you served him because not only do you have a loser each dog food match uh -huh. upcoming, yeah. but on Sunday, Bloody Sunday 2... It's a dog collar chain match. The two of you be chained together with dog collars. Is Smokey Mountain Wrestler trying to kill me? Are they trying to murder me? Boo Bradley, not only is that dog food match, that's an embarrassment, but I can live with that. But now they're trying to kill me neck to neck. That big dog collar on that big, great, fat, smelly neck of yours and a chain going on my neck. You can kill me. You can wrap it around my neck, throw me over that rope and hide me till my face turns all different colors and I blow up all over Knoxville Coliseum. But, Boo Bradley, you know, let me tell you something. Everything you know, I taught you. So I know those few little things are up there running around that minute little brain of yours and that great big fat head. 
So, boy, I'm going to take you right there in Knoxville. I'm going to beat you down, and I'm going to drag you all around that whole ring. Then I'm going to drag you down Interstate 40, up Interstate 81, and right back to my backyard right there in New Jersey, wherever you belong. Tie you around that tree where you can live out the rest of your lousy, miserable days as I come out every morning to get my paper, and I kick you right in the big fat head. <laughs> bloody Sunday, bloody Sunday, I'm finishing you off for good. Chris Candido, one upset gentleman, will be back shortly with action, the gangsters, and the heavenly bodies. That's pretty foul, man. He's talking about kicking him in his head, and I don't know, Doc, what you got from that? He killed the man's kitty cat, so after that, anything's on the table. Well, that's uh, true, too. <laughs> so now he's trying to feed him dog food. Where is PETA when you need him? Now, here... Is it just me, or does Chris look like he's on the gas big time there? He looks puffy, huh? He look a little puffy. Okay. Um, I get my physique all natural, so I don't know what that looks like, so I was kind of hoping you could help, so thank you for that. Um, he's just really good at this. His character really has not evolved much since he got here. But it's still entertaining, and I think that says a lot about his just natural abilities. The That promo was pretty basic, and what I mean by that is uh, there's prob- there's a million guys out there who could who could say the exact same words that he said, and it wouldn't have the same effect. Right. But he's just good, and he knows how to deliver it, and he just basically promote the dog food match and the dog collar, and then... And he knows how to draw sympathy for Boo when he's talking about, you know, he's going to chain him to a tree and kick him every morning. And, <laughs> and mean, because he and because he killed the cat, it's believable, right? Yeah, he murdered. Shit, his, he might he murdered he his might cat. Actually, do this. Well, he murdered his cat, and if you remember the backstory too, which we've talked about, is he did he basically did have Boo living in a boiler room and was chained to stuff, and so I mean. It's not far fetched because that was the story they told, and he's gonna mistreat him. And mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's Boo Bradley, Balls Mahoney is a very sympathetic figure here, long before his ECW days, uh, where he was the chair swinging freak. But I just Boo is a very good babyface in this role. I, I I can be invested in this quite easily with the way Tammy and Chris have che- treated him, and the fact that they they literally murdered his cat. They he fucking squished his cat they didn't just murder him they didn't just say on tv oh he threw his cat into a river and he drowned they actually showed him doing a leg drop onto this damn cat Mm -hmm. there you have it this is good stuff it is let's keep going we got a promo with Cornette and les thatcher and corny's gonna throw us to the match with with the heavenly bodies versus the gangsters from super saturday night fever uh he's gonna introduce it he being corny and les here it is to our special edition of smoky mountain wrestling and you know one of the most awesome toughest matches in the history of Smoky Mountain Wrestling took place between the gangsters and Jim Cornette's heavenly bodies at Super Saturday Night Fever. Yeah, everybody had a fever about 104. The gangsters said they're the big, tough street fighters. Well, after what they did to me Christmas night, I knew there was only one team that could get even, and that was Tom Pritchard and Jimmy Del Rey, the heavenly bodies. They came back to the Knoxville Coliseum for Super Saturday Night Fever, and here's exactly what happened when they collided in the ring. Well, so th- this is, I don't, <laughs> I'm having trouble describing where to start, Doc, because this goes on for about 11 minutes and it's pretty damn wild. Would you agree? Yes and yes. Uh, well, where to start? Del Ray's grown his hair out since the last time we've seen him. Yes. Which makes him look like even more of a dirt bag. The real thing that we're going to miss here. And I had told him to get ready is Harper singing Smooth Up In You. So anytime you want to belt that out, just let me know. Smooth Up In You. Something Whoa. like that. Yeah. Okay, maybe stop. Okay. Okay, keep uh, going. Um, How do we call this? This is a fucking war. I mean, there's no, like... Dude, it's, and, and, and it's so dark in this arena. It's too dark, actually. And, well, especially when they're fighting on the outside. And the lights keep coming on and off for reasons I don't understand. Well, I think, okay, so here's what I think was happening. I think somebody was trying to direct 
for the lights to come on. And like somebody was saying, hey, get a message, get the lights to come on while they're on the outside. Because if the lights come on while while they're all on the outside of the ring, you can kind of see what's going on. Like, I mean, they spent the first two minutes outside the ring and you really couldn't see what was happening. So like right now, you see how the lights came on? They're on the outside of the ring. So the lights come mm-hmm. on. But, but then they'll roll back in and they'll turn them down. And it's there was no coordination of turning the lights on and off is, was, was, the, was the issue. A so two by was, four was used like when they first went to it, right? Then yes. powder, racket, chains, tables. Um, Les said and, something. Les said used the word homeboy in there at one point. That made me Jesus a Christ. I love Les Thatcher, but Les Thatcher saying homeboy is just. <laughs> um, Les Thatcher some, must listen to this show and say, "What in the flying piss is this?" There's. Tables and powder. Del Rey misses a poon salt. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, we just have a DQ. After all that other stuff that's happened, just carnage, there's a DQ. I didn't like that. So, and I, I, the one thing I didn't understand was so I would, here's what I assume. I assume. Technically, the bell didn't ring, and all of that stuff was technically before the match started, no. before the official match started. I think that may have been what happened. And then, well, it breaks down once the match starts, they work for a while, and that's when the DQ happens. Well, these guys had a hell of a match. This was thoroughly entertaining. They got after it. Oh, and people loved it. I mean, this is, um, you know, Dr. Tom's about to hang Mustafa right here. Which hey, is, hey, come on, dude. Well, he's hanging him. I mean, I'm not lying. Uh-huh. Look at it. Tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT at the 1525 mark of this thing. And, and Dr. Tom is hanging Mustafa. It is it is what it is. And you gotta, you got to love a country where only a black man can make Jim Cornette a baby face. <laughs> He's been uh, stabbed and attacked and slapped and spit on, and now he's a good guy. I've said that. I said that when this first happened. Because because the Midnight's never fought the Jive Tones, I guess. I don't know. I said that when this first happened, mm, and there okay. was Del Rey missing the poon salt. I said that when it first happened. Man, Corny has eviscerated not only the people in the Smoky Mountains, but throughout the country, in Mid South, in Mid Atlantic, in Jim Crocker Promotions. Uh, Memphis, anywhere he's been, he's eviscerated people. But because he's in here with these god dang Negroes. Whoa, 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 sir. I'm, 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 I'm quoting the people of the Smoky Mountains. He's a baby face. You get him, Cornette. We don't want their kind around here, man. These people are not. They're in here. They're destroying our way of life. They bring all their, 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 their 500 kids... And this is some bullshit. Get their asses, Cornette. Dr. Tom beat this some bitch's ass and sent him back where he come from. We ain't for this round here, man. Um, back to your point though. They go for a while, it ends in a DQ. Then Doc the DQ. They start fighting outside. They're under the bleachers. They cut from the mat they they cut away from the building. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now hold on. Before we do get out of the ring, can you get to the tables when the table comes in and D'Lo hitting the table? All right, let's see. Yeah, he damn near broke his fucking neck. Um, Man, he, he, he hit that back. table awkwardly. So they, they, they set the table up, and I think they send New Jack into it first. Yeah. yeah. So New Jack's about to go into the table, and he hits it. And he just hits it with his shoulder and then comes off. Uh-huh. And then D'Lo, D'Lo goes into it in like, or Mustafa's going to go into it now. And, and he, Mustafa does fine. He hits it with his head. And then D'Lo yeah. goes into it. And then D'Lo like goes into it to spear it. And shoop. <laughs> oh, he snapped back. Oh. He hit the piss out of that table. Uh, uh-huh. The table doesn't break. It just kind of flies. No. Like, yeah. D'Lo hit it. Mm. Now, look at the people. They're going nuts as uh, now the the gangsters are being choked. 
But this thing ends up being a brawl outside. They brawl in the crowd. Then they go outside the arena. It was reminiscent of the very first brawl we ever saw outside the ring with the Fantastics and the Heavenly Bodies. Except that's exact that, time, that that's exactly what I had. Is that this reminds me of the Heavenly Bodies and Fantastics at the back of that school? Yeah, they basically replayed that event with the fantastic did you notice everybody. did you notice that on the tape it says it's 11 40 at night um when they get to the didn't. back and it's the handheld camera it says it's 11 40 interesting I, I i didn't i didn't realize that at first so what i'm wondering is, is did they really when did they really cut that like maybe after right they just went to the back and had a beer and chilled out, and then, and then cut, after everybody and, left, and, they and, cut and, that. And cut it after, maybe so. Yeah, because maybe if, so. Yeah, because when because when you watch it here in a second, um, here we go. See, it's right off yeah. the bat. First thing yeah. I noticed. Shut they're, up, Les. I'm trying to get here. They're they're fighting. It's See, right there, 40 p.m. Yeah, um, they are fighting. First off, they're they're in like the 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 back of the arena. The loading dock, the, if you will. The loading docks, I guess, if you want to call it. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Yeah, but then, what I liked about it is the bleeps add to it. Oh, yeah, the bleeps add to it. It was just like what they did with the Fantastics. It was the same exact thing. And then you'll notice they're literally fighting into the out past the loading docks, and now they're yep. getting to the point where they're going to be into the street. So yeah, how about goes corny, on and on. How about Corny in a parking lot before ECW was out in the streets? Well, not only that, but... I, do you think the Knoxville Police Department was aware of this? That way they wouldn't get phone calls because you it's possible African American men out here fighting three white men, and there's cars passing by. So I'm wondering if Corny tipped off the police department to say, "Hey, you see a brawl out there in the street? It's uh, just the wrestling matches." Or he didn't, and just said, "Let's are, take our chances." Well, that's true too, because they are fighting. And there's cars the passing by and the damn here's what I wanted to know. And boy, this is I, I'm joking and I'm not joking, Mike. It's also 1140 at night and you got black men that aren't wearing coats in the wintertime running off into the dark in this part of the country. How safe is that? <laughs> That's why I said I hope he called the cops. For that reason and that reason alone. Shit. They're lucky they uh. didn't get their asses shot right then and there. Man, I, I it crossed my mind. Like they're out there fighting against three white guys. I can see Knoxville's finest pulling up. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Like, they'd have just done what the police told them to. They'd have been fine. Damn. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Like, Meanwhile, they got imagine? bullet. They're riddled with bullet holes with the life pouring out of them. Shit, and... we're being serious here. Can you imagine? Man. Oh fuck. Because, you and I like, need to, you is, and I need to respond to police officers' directions in a much different fashion. Well, the thing is, I could argue. You can't. You told a story on the show one time when you were arguing with a cop, you dumbass. Um, I, so, I told him he wasn't going to give me a ticket. Let's go. Come on. You want to get the mayor on the phone? I can probably beat him too. No, let's go. No, Latrell was back there starting to cry because he was tired well, and hungry. Yeah, and he, he was. Cop, he was nervous, and I just was like, "This ain't going down this way, pal." You told the cop to to fuck off and leave and don't talk to your kid and don't tell you how to parent. That's fucking yeah. privilege to a T. What, what would happen if you tried that? <laughs> I don't know, man. Come on, stop that. All right, I'd have to. Here I'd have go. to come. I'd have to vi come put flowers on your grave every Starcade anniversary. Damn, that's a nice asshole. Well, speaking of uh, some things, going this on, is. Uh, I I, I want to. I just want to say out here that the views expressed by Jim Cornette certainly reflect hard body harper's views of the world here uh and mike are you gonna be okay with this well i just want to prep everybody out there who listens to us um this is the unprofessional wrestling podcast for a reason and let me just say Cornette is about to cut one of the most racist promos <laughs> you'll probably ever hear and not only that but he knows his audience he knows his audience well when he cuts his promo in the great smoky mountains that are very much white snow white 
So, uh, Doc, you got any thoughts or you want me to hit play? No, I think we're ready for this. Are we ready for this? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hit play. The views okay. expressed here are those of Jim Cornette and not of Booking the Territory, the Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. Here we go. Here it is. Uh, pay, if you're if you're a Patreon member and you're watching it on Patreon, play cl- pay close attention to Les, who is doing everything in his power not to pop from time to time here. Here we go. Friendly bodies and Jim Cornette. And Jim, <laughs> that was nothing short of a street fight that the gangsters say they're expert in. Well, you see, it took the heavenly bodies coming back to Smoky Mountain Wrestling to give the gangsters a little taste of their own medicine. You see, they'd been running roughshod all right over a lot of teams, but it was over a lot of teams that didn't know how to cheat, didn't know how to be dirty, didn't know how to be nasty, didn't mind pulling up a piece of furniture or going outside the rules. But then when they faced the heavenly bodies, they found out real quick that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You know, I could come out here and I could say something like, uh, the gangsters are so black, lightning bugs follow them around in the daytime. But New Jack would accuse me of being a racist. Or I could say, for example, that, uh, well, New Jack got arrested for trying to blow up a car, but he burned his lips on a tailpipe. <laughs> but New Jack Christ. would accuse me of being a racist. Or I could say, what do you say to a gangster in a three-piece suit? Will the defendant please rise? That's but the, nice. New Jack would accuse me of being a racist. But if I also said that the gangsters didn't deserve to be the Smoky Mountain Tag Team Champions when they possessed those belts, then the gangsters would accuse me of being a racist. If I said that the gangsters don't take responsibility for their own actions, and culpability, when things go wrong, they'd accuse me of being a racist. In short, that's New Jack's car. It don't have anything to do with race. A lot of people think it does because he's got them buffaloed. A lot of people get uproar when you hear the words white and black, but the simple fact of the matter boils down. New Jack is the kind of guy who doesn't care about his people, like I've said before, only wants to make a dollar off of it, only wants to get some notoriety off of it. There's a certain segment of the society in America today that doesn't want to take responsibility for their actions. Now, when they do something good, it's all them. But when something bad happens, like they lose a belt, discrimination, or something bad happens, they lose a match, oh, they're all against us. Or something bad happens, like they get their brains beat out at the hands of the heavenly bodies, oh, it's discrimination, all the people are against us. Well, I got, I got news for you, New Jack. I've talked to some people. I've talked to some people around Smoky Mountain Wrestling, white and black and indifferent. And you know what? They all tell me they're against you for one simple reason. You're an embarrassment to your people, you're a loudmouth jerk and you're a troublemaker. Well, right here's some troublemakers that can give you a taste of your own medicine. And I guarantee you this, the doubleheader weekend is coming up. And we've got two matches that we know are going to put an end to the myth of the gangsters once and for all. Johnson City, February 25th, it's a Smoky Mountain street fight. That's the match that these men made famous as the Fantastics, the Rock and Roll Express, going back to the early days of Smoky Mountain Wrestling. The heavenly bodies have never lost. A Smoky Mountain street fight. And we got a few tricks up our sleeve for that one. The brawl in the hall in Johnson City. And then, <laughs> Sunday, bloody Sunday too. Kind of a special day in my heart because it's going to be in Knoxville, February 26th. Six-man tag. The gangsters and D'Lo Brown against the Heavenly Bodies and Jim Cornette. That's right. I'm going to get back in the ring. Me, a guy who's never whipped anybody in his life. A guy who has been beaten by women, a couple of midgets, and every man that I've ever stepped foot in a wrestling ring with. But I'm going to get in the ring with the gangsters. And the gangsters say I'm crazy, and they laugh, and they joke, and they carry on. But they don't know what I know. They don't know what the heavenly bodies know. And if they did, they wouldn't be smiling, and they wouldn't be laughing. They'd be running and peeping and hiding. And gangsters, you're going to find out just exactly what the trick up our sleeve is for that six man in Knoxville, Tennessee. But you're not going to find out until it's too late. I'm not an idiot. Believe me, I ain't getting in over my head because I got a trump card to play and the heavenly bodies and Jim Cornette are coming to get some revenge. I'm going to get revenge for a scar on my head. I'm going to get revenge for that arthritis in my knee and I'm going to get revenge for everybody that you railroaded and rough-shotted since you've been in Smoky Mountain Wrestling because we're not only going to beat you, brother, Sunday bloody Sunday in Knoxville, we're going to humiliate you. I kind of feel like it's self-explanatory. I mean, that was a racist tirade, especially at the very beginning. But I don't know, Doc, you want to add anything? I don't feel like I can add much. He said New Jack got arrested for trying to blow up a car, but he burned his lips on a tailpipe. Yeah. But he also cut one hell of a promo in the second half of that, too. So he was 
you're right. He's playing to his audience, but that was a hell of a promo. I mean, he's like, I've been beaten up by women, a couple of midgets, every other, every man I've been in the ring with. That was awesome. But then he's like, he's hot. He's like, I'm getting it back, you back for the arthritis, the, the stitches. I got a plan, pal. So think about that. So, man, this was a hell of a, I mean, look, you, it was crazy. It was wild ass. You shouldn't have done it then. Maybe you should, couldn't get do it now. He was talking him into the building too on the last half of it. Yeah, this was this was wild ass and crazy, huh? Yeah, it, the whole point was it like he knows his audience, and then he promotes. So he says all that stuff about the gangsters, and then at the end of it, he's pumping up Sunday Bloody Sunday. So I mean, he he it was exactly what you wanted it to be. I mean, it really was. Uh, if you're talking about textbook promos for, I mean. He said some heelish shit, but not for his territory. It's, I mean, you gotta, you gotta put, you gotta think of like, God, I hate to use one of Bischoff's like saying, you know how Bischoff says context is king. Well, like he's not, he's right. Especially in this example, the context of, of what, like why Corny said what he said right here, he knew his audience and he knew he was riling him up. And he, he will, dude, he's flame. I mean, he's flaming a race war here is what he's doing. But but I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. Anyway, well, as long as you're thoughts? okay with it, then, as long as you're okay with it, then I guess we're good. It's I was worried I about mean, your. Well, I was worried about your feelings. Oh, shut the fuck up. It's wrestling. I mean, give me a break. All right. Oh, can we move forward, Doc? I had you heard all three of those jokes before. Um. Yes, especially the one about um. Will the um. Defendant, please rise. rise. He he used that one on Manny Fernandez and um Crockett promotions. So except he just said, "What do you, uh, what do you tell a Mexican in a courtroom in a three piece suit?" And he was like, "Will the, will the defendant please rise?" So he he used that one on Manny. I've got it's actually on the BTT YouTube channel. All right, so uh, we'll keep going. I, hey, you you keep hearing me reference the the, the uh, Patreon videos. Like I said, you can become a patron at tinyurlcom slash BTT. It's a great way to support this show uh, and get a ton of extra bonus content. 200-plus Patreon shows are up there. So, again, consider it, and I beg you and plead with you to please become one. There you go. Uh, we go to a recap of Unibomb and Gilbert winning the Smoky Mountain Rumble match from last week that we talked about. And then Les throws us to a Smoky Mountain Rumble at Saturday Night Fever that Ricky Morton wins by dropkicking Unibomb over the top rope, and he, he gets the win. But after the match, Unibomb attacks Morton, as you're watching now with us, and uses sandpaper, I assume, on the face of Morton. Uh, Gibson ends up making a save, but Ricky Morton is damaged in the process. Doc, what are your thoughts on this uh, rumble and how it all ended? Well, it's the reverse of what kind of happened last week in the rumble where Morton got beat. So Morton gets his revenge, gets it back. Lawler's such a great heel because he has no reason to be out there in the feud, but he's still doing dick, prickish, dickish things. Yes, and we're going to get to him in a second. So I'm gonna Oh, of course we are. Yeah, I'm going to keep my thoughts uh, about that to myself because we're going to we're going to play some stuff from him and Buddy. Uh to, but to yeah. quote to quote JR that particular situation. That particular situation, exactly. All right, let's go to Ricky Morton after he was defeated or after he won that rumble, but he's got his face all taped up, similar to Jim Crockett Promotions when he had his face taped up uh cuz Unibomb basically rubbed Sandpaper on his face. So here it is. And Ricky Morton, I want to say to you that uh, very fast, this big, awesome Unibomb is becoming the most out of control and dangerous monster I've seen here in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and certainly your face does attest to that. Well, as you know, I thought Eddie Gilbert was bad. You know, he come into Smoky Mountain, he always wants to be the center of attention. Even back before Robert and I, Eddie Gilbert and I were partners, he always wanted to be the center of attention. But he found out it's not going to happen that way here in Smoky Mountain. So he's running here crazy. You don't know what he's going to do. But now he sends this big Unibomb after us. And everybody see what he done to my face. But I'm not out here trying to cry over spilled milk. The one thing, in fact, what I'm trying to tell you is you remember the story of David and Goliath? I sure do. Well, that's the one thing that's going to happen because you got to understand one thing, Unibomb. It don't matter who you bring to the ring, but when 465 pounds hit you upside the head, you're going down flat on the mat. And no matter how big you are, when you're laying flat on your back in the middle of the ring, you know tall on this right here. So guys, you bring it right on because everybody here knows what the Rock and Roll Express stands for. They know what we're all about. 
and you know, Bob, you're soon to find out. Ricky Morton thought he was a pretty boy. You thought you were real cute, costing me $10,000. Well, Ricky Morton, this is your invitation to my world, a world of ugliness and a world of darkness. Any partner that can't keep up with me, that's just too bad. I'll leave him behind because no one beats you in a bomb, not even the Rock and Roll Express. The Smoky Mountain had I thought Unibomb, a.k.a. Kane, was good there in a short, quick promo. But what did you have? I thought Ricky Morton was actually good. The whole when 465 pounds hit you and and you're only this tall when you're laying on the flat of your back. I was actually thinking Kane probably shouldn't be talking at this point because he's got that mask and you could get some mystique out of it. But whatever. They kept it short. Um, But I hear you. No, I, I hear you there. All right. So we keep going. Uh, where are we at? Okay. Uh, Dirty White Boy versus Jerry Lawler. Remember, Buddy Landell is the timekeeper in this thing. Now, they the match is joined in progress. And Dirty White Boy, let me get to it here. Dirty White Boy hits the Buck Snort Blaster and is about to go for the pin on Lawler when Buddy decides to ring the bell. Now, the key to that is this is supposed to be a 60 minute time limit. And yet just a, like three minutes in buddy's ringing a bell. So Les even mentions on commentary that buddy just said two minutes had passed like, you know, a few minutes ago and that 15 minutes had then gone by. And now he's already calling after 15 minutes. I'm sorry. I got, let me get this right. Two minutes ago, Les is saying 15 minutes gone by or Buddy's saying 15 minutes gone by and then two minutes later he's calling for the bell at 60 minutes. So they 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 were nowhere close to the time limit is my point. Uh, Doc, your thoughts on this as referee Mark Curtis restarts the match? Well, when you've got Lawler and Dirty White Boy out there, those are two guys that are not going to wake up early and hit the gym before the, the ride to the next town, right? Definitely Dirty White Boy, because um, Tracy Smother said that to us. Well, Corny sa- has said that Lawler never spent a day in his life in a gym. Well, very believable, too. He didn't need to. <laughs> Did Buddy, need is, to? Buddy is just ridiculous. And I don't know. I mean, I love having Lawler in here. Because he's big time, man. And Dirty White Boy needs that big time opponent. So it just, yeah. this has a big fight feel to me. It does. So let me tell everybody what happens then. So referee Mark Curtis says, no, this is bull crap, buddy. This is the 60 minute time limit draw did not happen. We're only like 15, 16, 17 minutes into the match. So referee Mark Curtis restarts the match and Landell, he bans Landell from ringside. The ref gets bumped, though. Dirty White Boy hits Lawler with a DDT. Dirty White Boy's got Lawler pinned. Landell comes in while the ref is not looking, comes in and pile drives Dirty White Boy. Landell then puts Lawler on top of the White Boy, and then Landell goes and gets the ref and throws him into the ring, and Mark Curtis counts the pin, and we have a new Smoky Mountain Wrestling heavyweight champion, who is Jerry the King Lawler. Um, So Lawler is the champ. Now, before we talk about that, they immediately go to the next match, which is Buddy versus the Dirty White Boy, So, which is supposed to be a lights-out match. Now, that particular match, it only lasted like two minutes. Buddy's farting around, fucking off during the match, and Dirty White Boy hooks Landell and pins him and beats him, and then after the match, Buddy lays a DDT on Dirty White Boy and walks over him. So while Dirty White Boy won this match with Buddy, he just lost his title a second ago. And Landell also gets some good heat on him at the end of it. So a lot went on here. A lot to follow. What are your thoughts as we have a new Smoky Mountain Wrestling Heavyweight Champion and then Buddy losing to Dirty White Boy, but Dirty, um, but then Buddy getting some heat on White Boy after the fact? We got a new champ, pal. That hadn't happened in a while, man. Did it's you, been a couple you, of hundred, day, 
a couple hundred days, like 236, 257, something like that. He's um, got to have the longest reign of, of uh, that's got to be the longest reign, huh? I think there was one longer, but it might have been him. Uh, the okay. other thing is, is uh, not to spoil anything for anybody, but that's the last time you're going to have a dirty white boy heavyweight champion in this promotion. No. Uh, but yes. you know, it kind of ran its course, though, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um, and he got fucked with some of his opponents. If you think yeah. about it, with Jake, you know, screwing uh, over the promotion. Y- so. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, okay, so. It's weird because you just changed champions, yet you have the guy who lost the belt still in the ring, and Landell's fighting, but it's not for the championship. I can't say why, but it doesn't feel like, it doesn't it feels odd, and it doesn't put the belt in a great light. Well, it feels weird because Buddy basically kind of like screwed himself out of a chance at the title. That's what feels weird. When Buddy Pyle drove White Boy, it it screwed Buddy over because now Buddy is not facing the champion. He's facing White Boy, right? Who wasn't who? I mean, who who's no longer the champ because Lawler won the title, so it kind of screws White Boy. That's the I mean, it kind of screws Buddy. What what was disjointed, and I'm sure you know Corny did this for a reason. Um, so I'm not trying to argue with Corny's booking here. My my point is, Buddy screws over the white boy, but in turn, now he's going to go wrestle the white boy, but he doesn't have a chance at the title. And that's what he wants, a chance at the title, and he doesn't get one here. But he's about to turn his attention to that. So I guess I'm, it's not really much of a gripe. Anyway. I got a question. That, yeah. If it's lights out unsanctioned, why is there a referee? Man, I don't know. If we're not going to sanction it, why would we give him a referee? I don't know, man. I can't answer that one. Coming from somebody who saw plenty of lights out in Mid-South. Yeah, I don't know. But what I do know is we got the new Smoky Mountain Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, Jerry the King Lawler. Wow. He's going to cut a promo after his match. Um, not after his match, but they're back in, you just call it a studio. He's with Les, and let's hear with... Uh, Jerry Lawler has to say as he pops less when he says, <laughs> he says, uh, no, I'll just play it. Here it is. He pops less. Less. If you're on Patreon, watch less. Look down. Less, less bites his lip because he's laughing. The new Smoky Mountain heavyweight wrestling champion, <laughs> Jerry the King Lawler. And Jerry, in all sincerity. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, first of all, I don't like the tone of your voice. I can see what's coming. If you want to, why don't we just start this over? Because... You need to you need to somehow let it come across to the fans out there. What a pleasure it is for you to be able to stand next to me, the new Smoky Mountains champion, and and just just to pal around with me. Well, so it come probably on, is true, but more now that you've done that for me, let me carry on, pick it up from there, and ask you: Can you sincerely tell me that you think you deserve this belt in the manner in which you receive it? Do you really feel that you are the heavyweight champion? I cannot believe that you call yourself... What, what, what is your official title here? I uh, probably don't have one, but I'm sure you'll come up with one. Well, well sir, I mean, you know, I'm, probably a lot of people think that you're the MC of this show or whatever, but MC doesn't stand for mental case, except maybe in your, in in your situation. Case, That's right. right. Now, anybody with any brains at all would realize that this is the first time in this entire area that you have had a champion that you can actually be proud of. Somebody that you can look up to. Somebody that you, which you, you can go out and tell your grandkids this afternoon, that you had the privilege and the honor of standing next to Jerry the King Lawler as he was holding the Smoky Mountains Championship belt. Look at it. Can you get a tight shot of this belt? Can you see this? Put your bifocals on. Look at this. What is that right there? No, no, no. With this right here. That is a crown. Say no more. I mean, you know, if this belt was made for me. It's got a crown on it. I got a crown on. I am the king. You understand that? And yes, I deserve this belt. Yes, I am the champion. And like I said, a champion that you children out there, your parents can tell your little kids, look, eat your vegetables, eat that spinach, eat that slop we put on the table. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll grow up and be like Jerry the King Lawler. 
Now, I am sick of people like you and people like the dirty white boy running around trying to insinuate that I am not deserving of this. As I said, this is the first time you've ever had a truly deserving champion. Now I want you to cut that out. Do you understand me? No. Well, you haven't answered my question. Do you really feel that you deserve this belt? Hello? Anybody home in there? What's wrong? You, were help, you had assistance in winning this title. <laughs> assistance? And do you feel that you can stand up, put the belt around your waist, and say, I am the Smoky Mountain Heavyweight Champion? Look, let me just tell you one thing right now. Just a little tip, okay? I'm sure everybody out there, even those morons watching this right now on their black and white television sets realize this. When you're talking, hold the microphone that way. When I'm talking, hold it over here. Okay? <laughs> Little chip. Just trying to help you. And another thing I'm going to do for these idiots here in Rock Knoxville, or wherever the Rocksville, whatever this is, I want you to know that everybody in the rest of Tennessee is ashamed of this area. And I am going to take it upon myself to each week, I'm going to come on here and maybe give a little, like a health or a personal hygiene tip to try to bring you people up to standards, so to speak, okay? Try to make you people be sort of like we are over in Memphis. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about literate. I'm talking about being able to conduct yourself like ladies and gentlemen. I'll do that as a personal favor because I am your champion, a champion that now you can be proud of. With me, Nature Boy, buddy, Les. Les is the consummate professional, but he is having trouble holding it together throughout this thing. How great was King there, though? I mean, he truly believes this. I mean, he, there is no line between him and his character. And he's so comfortable and good at it. He's freaking spectacular. He, it's like he he's not acting. He's being Jerry the King Lawler, screwing with Les, telling him how to hold the mic. You know, hello, McFly. I was hey, waiting for you, him to say you, that. You get to pal around with me. <laughs> that was a great line at the beginning that got me. Uh, just, he asked him, he asked, he's like, what does the MC stand for? Mental case? He's going to bring back Tammy's tips. Yeah, he's, he says he's bringing back Tammy's tips. I just, at the end he says, I am your champion. That reminded me of Gino when Gino would say that. I am your champion. I am your champion. Ah. And he's a Tennessee guy, but he might as well be from up north. New York he, City. Yeah, because he's. Sticking it, you know, because it, you know, it drives them crazy. The big city Tennesseans that treat them like trash. He's playing on that, just like yep. Corny played on them with the with the gangsters earlier. These people are getting played left and right, man. I feel bad played. for these hillbillies. Played, holy crap, worked. Oh, this was great. I can't add anything more, man. This was it was great, awesome. Man. Lawler was fabulous right there. We got some. Uh, Heavy contenders for the for the uh, government cheese, man. We really do, uh, but we'll keep going because we got one more promo before this episode ends, and that is the Nature Boy Buddy Landell. And Buddy's got a gripe here, but he kind of screwed himself. With all that said, let's listen, let's listen to what Buddy has to say as he's talking to Les. Nature Boy Buddy Landell, and Buddy, it doesn't seem to be in the cards for you to have a title shot at this point in time because on the twenty fifth, Jerry Lawler, the new. Smoky Mountain Heavyweight Champion is going to defend that title against the Dirty White Boy in a return. And no matter who wins there, on the 26th, they come back. Again, the title is on the line, but this time, the winner of the match meets Nature Boy Buddy Land. And it doesn't really matter who wins that match. They just go ring around the rosy, ring around the rosy, except Buddy Landell is excluded. It's like the Jerry Reed's country and western song. They get the gold mine and I'm getting the shaft as usual. But I got a few tricks up my sleeve. And I'm one ticked off individual. I'm an unhappy camper. And let me explain something to you. Jerry Lawler, I helped you. The only reason that you're the champion right now is because I helped you. The only reason the white boy ain't the champion is because I caused it. I caused things to happen around here. And things are going to happen. You understand what I'm saying, Les Thatcher? I'm a ticked off individual. I don't care when it is, but I'm going to cause things to happen because I'm the straw that stirs the drink in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And I'm telling you what, until I become the Smoky Mountain Heavyweight Champion, I'm going to make everybody's life miserable around here, including yours. You got that straight, Jack? And stir it, I'm sure he That's will. That's right, I said it. Fans, we'll be back with a final word right after this. Um, Les, is, Les is having to deal with a lot of abuse here at the end of this man. episode. <laughs> <laughs> Les, Les is having to deal with some shit, man. <laughs> I, I will say this. Buddy did screw himself, but 
I kind of need to go back to something that also happened. Buddy also technically did sign for a match for the title. Right. So the promotion kind of screwed him too. Yeah. So he's got a gripe, but that was my note. What did you have? Um, He said until he gets a shot, he's going to make everybody's life miserable, which is a great line. I wish Harper was here because he brought up the great, the great Jerry Reed. And uh, she got the gold mine, and I got the shaft. is a fantastic song. You should try to go listen to sometime. Uh, yes, Jerry Reed, Jerry Reed was awesome. Tim and Four. so, look. What I'm trying to say, Tim Four, pal. What you're you you're, you're not you can't get away from your Jodeci and your baby. Kirk. Won't you just stay for yeah. a little while? And your and your bones. Come and talk to me. Really wanna meet you. How old were you? How old were you when you turned your back on the rest of us honkies? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> what kind of question is that? Because you, you did. About, you you did. Like, I know a lot. Look, I know a lot of, of African-American cultural artifacts. Just, you know, I'm, I'm more knowledgeable than the average honky, but you live this stuff. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you say, pal. All right, man. Uh, we need to we need to wrap up this episode. Uh, man, man we this, this whole episode was only 43 minutes. We've been talking about this forever. Why? Um, you got to rate it, man. You got to jump in and rate this one because this well, one was on. a hell of an episode. I want to point something out to you. This is what I was talking about. Brawl in the Hall, Freedom Hall, Johnson City, Saturday, February uh -huh. 25th. was supposed uh -huh. to be the Rock and Roll versus Gilbert and Unibom. Eddie dies a week before this even took place. Well, he was also in Puerto Rico by then, so it didn't matter. I know, but my point is he – I mean – Past, it's crazy, man. That he can't just, wrestle if you're dead. Well, we know that. Bill Watts would say, "Bring this body to the ring and pin him." And I'm not being funny here. That's what Bill Watts would say. Okay, uh, you rate it first. You have been for a week now talking about this being one of the highest rated ever. So I want you to rate it first. I will. I got no problem with that. If you go back and look at this, this is the big show rehab recaps. This is big money promos. This is all killer. No filler. This is hot. All 43 minutes matter. Pal, I'm going to give this a 9.7. Jesus Christ. You know, I don't like doing ratings anymore just because you box yourself into a corner because the minute you give something like, let's say an episode that you gave a 9.82 or 9.9, .9, and then you rank another episode at 9.6 people go, Oh, was it really that much worse? Well, not really. But if you box me into a corner and make me give it a rating, it's like, it's not the best, but it's fucking great. My example would be, I would give this episode an a plus on a grading scale of, a through F or a plus through F. But the whole point nine point, whatever just messes the whole rating scale up for me. So I don't know, man. Yeah. Uh, 9.7 sounds great. This was good. See, that's man. what I don't like. About, that's what I don't like about rating because I think, I think when you rate an episode, it takes away from what you're actually doing, which is enjoying the episode. So, no matter if I give a Smoky Mountain Rep Wrestling episode an 8.0 or 8.5, a 9, a 9.5, trust me, I'm enjoying it. And that's what I think the rating sometimes negates. It's like, why'd you give it such a low rating? But it's like, no, it was a good damn rating. Uh, I'm a, I'll am agree with you, 9.7. This was good. Everything mattered from start to finish. Hell, they started off hot. They fucking straight to the ring. Tracy Smothers versus Buddy. We then got the war with the heavenly bodies and the gangsters that spilled outside. Corny cuts that racist promo that was fabulous. Dirty White Boy and Lawler. What else do you want? Lawler wins the title. We had a, you know, the, the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Heavyweight title doesn't change hands every week. We got a title change. So there you go. 
We both give it a 9.7. Um, I think that's the second highest. I think there was a stud stable, heavenly bodies, rock and roll episode that I may have given a 9.9 nine to a while back. But I think I when mean, Master debuted and that, and that the chaos happened with like Les and and Bob Cottle, not Les, um, Bob Cottle and Dutch and, and Bob Cottle was like, Going down to the ring and less like Bob, don't go down there. You're gonna get stabbed. Yeah. What are you doing? I think we gave that one a high rating too, because of the because of the carnage at the end. But this is up there, man. And most people will say, and rightfully so on some on some ways, you know, ninety five Smoky Mountains. Ah, you know, and in some ways they're right, and it's gonna get rough later in the year. But man, this is hot, and this was fun. I, I just. I'm just using my rating to celebrate the greatness, pal. I had a good time. I, I, I spent it, it with you. Most importantly, we had we had precious times together. It's the um, it's the finish of of Smoky Mountain in '95. That's right, right. They come in '95 hot. Yeah, yeah. It's the finish. It's not. It's not the. It's not the uh, beginning. What if? Anyway. What if Robert Fuller was around to cut promos on the gangsters? Holy shit! <laughs> we talked about that when they came in. Can you imagine that motherfucker talking to New Jack? <laughs> no, no, I can't. I mean, Listen yes, up, I can. Listen up, fella. Hold t- stay out of my face and hold the microphone high. I, I would yeah. love. Uh, it would have been like people I That's knew a- when I was a kid. The old men sitting around talking about your people. Dude, dude that would be the, the heat. Cause see, full, corny can corny corny can do it, but Fuller can Lives play it. up to that. He sounds he, it. right, and he could play up to them fucking Tennessee folks and Kentucky folks, and oh, he would be speaking their language to them, and and you, dog whistling wanna, too. Holy shit, it would be phenomenal. Now you boys, and he would call anybody boys. But but it would be the way he says it about them. Yes, and all Let me of a tell sudden, you people, something about these boys here. Let me, hold on, boy. <laughs> I mean, it just would be the inflection that he would give. God, a master. The rest, the wrestling world will never know that. Okay, uh, I feel like the government cheese is going to be hard to give. I want to remind you all: use the Amazon referral link, tinyurl.com slash Patreon. Um, I'm sorry, tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. Great way to support this show. Uh, go buy Bobby Blaze's book, Pin Me, Pay Me. Bookmark tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. It is a great way to support this show. Uh, Doc, we got actually four minutes left on the Patreon video, so let's get this in real quick. Uh, who are you giving your government cheese to? Lots of opportunities, man. And you know it's got to be hot. When the guy who wins the, the strap for the first time in almost nine months doesn't get the cheese, that's crazy. Um I'm going to say corny for that promo. That was ridiculous. And he did a lot of bumping around. He took bumps on the parking in the parking lot on this shit. I, I'm going to give it to Lawler only to. Only to I just it's not fair. It's just not fair. Like corny should get it, but I'm going to give it to Lawler because I feel like that's how good of an episode this was. Lawler's promo with less was phenomenal. Corny's promo was phenomenal as he spoke to the people in the area. Again, just a great episode, man. This is see? wrestling. For, for real. How many flips and dives did you see? Well, I saw I saw D'Lo try to do one, and it didn't turn out so good. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, personal issues, talking shit, ass whooping, you know, the usual. Yep. Uh, Fritz von Malky would love this one because uh, you know he hates all the flips and dives, and um, he would definitely scream, "This is wrestling!" Uh, with this episode. So, all right, Doc. Uh, before we get out of here, I want to mention a couple of things. First, check out the wrestling podcast about nothing with Ring of Honor's Brian Malonis and Mike Crockett as they do their show every single Monday. They talk classic and current stuff. So just search the WPAM wherever you get your podcast from, or wrestling podcast about nothing. And check out our Vantage Point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast with Joe Murata and Michael Quinn, the northern version of BTT, slightly classier, a little bit more professional, but still fun nonetheless. Uh, they support us, so please support them. Our Vantage Point and the Wrestling Podcast about nothing. Doc, you got anything else before we get out of here? 
Okay, man. First of all, we done two shows tonight after a full day of work. We didn't have Harper on the second one. Then we watched what possibly is the top three shows so far out of 160 shows. I'm tuckered, pal. Let's let's you know probably ought to get on. Go ahead and get on out of here. So let me just say this uh, for Doc Hardbody, who's not here. Uh, Mike, can you go ahead and hit the tagline and get us on out of here? Book it, bitch. Before we get out of here, I want to shout out a couple of people, friends of the show. Also want to shout out some Patreon members and thank them for their patronage. Uh, Before I do all that, like I said, a couple of friends of the show and podcasts that we hope you support. Check out the wrestling podcast about nothing with Brian Malonis from ROH and Mike Crockett. They do their show every single Monday. Monday mornings, the show is dropped. They talk current and classic wrestling, along with some indie stuff, too. But it's a good show. They're friends of mine. So please support them because they support us. Also, check out our Vantage Point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast, run by buddies of mine, Joe Murata and Michael Quinn, as they give their take on the northern side of pro wrestling's history. Slightly classier, definitely more professional than we are. Thank you, Joe and Quinn, for all of your plugs. We appreciate it. Also, check out the Bottom Line cast with Mike Pru and JV. They do their show. I believe their shows are dropping on Wednesdays these days. I keep forgetting, but uh, they're basically breaking down the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin. So check out Mike and JV as they do their thing. Great show. And also Mike and JV do the ECW Extreme Livecast on our Patreon feed at the $5 level. So good guys doing some good work, and I appreciate it, Mike and JV. Thank you for all of your support. And like I said, I want to thank all the Patreon members out there for their support and patronage. We really appreciate it. We do two shows a week that are free. And then in addition to that, we do more because of you guys. And we appreciate that. So thanks for supporting this show. Uh, It's definitely a great thing that you do for us and and supporting us. I mean, I can't say it enough. I'm eternally grateful for all the patrons we have. And as I'm talking about being eternally grateful, shout out to the Hall of Fame patrons. Kevin Carter, Michael Angel, Bob Richards, Rocky Swayzo, Christopher Champer, Will Harkey, Robbie Dyson, Rick Beebe, Brad Dunyfin, Tom Schlegel, Coach Joey Chase, a.k.a. Willie Chase, Steve Malbasa, LaRon Brown, Kenny Byersdorf, Glenn Abbott, at GA Russell Nutt on Twitter, Bobby Murray, Marlon Mueller, a.k.a. at Half Pints Point. Keep cutting them promos, kid. I know you would love when I say that. Josh Warren, Everett Starr, Mike Childry, Kyle Riley, Disrespectfully Classy, Marky Blassie, Craig Norman, Johnny on Patreon, the great John Dean at YRC21, Josh Dunn, Ryan in Auburn, at Ryan in Auburn, that is, on Twitter. Good old Justin, Robert Smith, Joseph Ice, Tim Morecci, Adam Price, Brian Evans, Mark Wilson, Armando Martinez, David Jordan, Jesse Jacobs, Josh Fields, Chris Myers, Gerald Green, Mitchell Johnson, Mike Prue, Will Parker, Jeremy Bryant, Classy Alex, 
David DeVries, Frog Zeppelin, SV Pageant, Bill Salsa, Big Rich, at Spy Boy Sports Cap, R.E. Miller, 39, Jay Shiny, Ruben Espinosa, Merciless Jones, Jesse Lucas, Chris Browning, Justin Underscore, Andretti, Coleman 822, Marty Howell, T-Hog 94, and God Bold Unreal. Thanks for being Hall of Fame patrons. That list is getting longer and longer, and I appreciate it. Thank you for your patronage, and thank you for being Hall of Fame patrons and supporting this show and everything we do. That's all I got. Thank you again, guys. We appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day and week and whenever or month or whenever you're listening to this. Thank you very much. And like Hopper always says before we get out of here, book it, bitch.